Hallelujah. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. God has been good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to... Y'all keep going, keep going ahead and praising God. I'm going to ask one of the men folk if they will move the podium for me this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Yes, 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 yes. Don't stop. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. He's been too good. He's been more than good. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God. We praise him for his goodness. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Glory to your name, God. Woo! My God! Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! Jesus! Uh, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, uh, my soul cries out. Uh, hallelujah! Thank you, God. Jesus! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, God, yeah, God. <laughs> My God. Hallelujah. We got so much to praise God for. If you can move your arms, you got something to praise God for. If you can open your mouth, you got something to praise God for. If you can see your hand in front of your face, you got something to praise God for. Oh, hallelujah. 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 See, we as a people, we always worry about being happy. Happy is a flighting thing. But when you got joy, when you got joy, you can praise God even when it don't look good. You can praise God even when it don't feel good. Hallelujah. Because the word said the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh, you are wonderful. You are mighty. Hallelujah. 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 So we are, uh, we going to take it down. We're going to take it down because uh, <laughs> we can stay there forever and a day. You let me, I'm going to stay right there. But God got different plans this morning for me. He said, today is not a preaching day. Today is a talking day. So that's why I move the podium out here. And we're going to treat this just as if it was core, y'all. We're going to treat this just as if it was core. I'm going to need y'all to talk back to me. If you got something to say, don't, don't hold back. Woo. Woo. Oh, God, because y'all know I'm a firm believer that God loves your voice. He loves to hear you. your voice. 
even when you don't feel like nobody's listening, he's listening. So that's what we're going to do today. Amen. I thank God for being up here this morning. I thank God for Apostle Jimmy and Apostle Nicole for allowing me to come up here this morning. Amen. Amen. We thank God for being here. I don't, I don't get to preach often on, in the pulpit setting. I preach every day. <laughs> so I count it an honor to be up here this morning. Amen. Amen. So if y'all don't mind, I do have a subject of sorts. But like I said, we're going to treat this like core. So I want y'all to feel very, very comfortable this morning. I want you to be able to talk back, be able to say some things, you know, if you feel, if you feel led to. If you don't want to, that's fine too, because I'm not pushing nobody. <laughs> My favorite saying is, God is a gentleman. If he doesn't push himself on me, I'm not going to push him on you. So, anyway, so um, this morning we'll be coming from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. If you don't mind this morning, I'm going to ask you guys to stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Amen. Glory to your name, God. Okay. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. When you have it, you can ding, say it. <laughs> Amen. 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 All right, and the word reads, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms for those who enter the temple. So he's at the gate every day asking for handouts. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. Excuse me. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Amen. You may be seated at this time. So, you may be thinking, um, you know, she's got a scripture and all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> so, what are we talking about today? We're not going to be talking about the usual Christmas <laughs> he was a baby and why we you know we're not going to be talking about that and the you know, real reason for Christmas we all know that I'm, I'm not going to take it for granted but Jesus is the reason why we celebrate Christmas okay so this is not what we're going to be talking about today my subject of sorts if you want to call it that is re-gifting re-gifting okay so re-gifting in itself it means to give a gift one has received to someone else. And usually when you talk about re-gifting, it has a bad connotation, right? You don't think good about it, right? So if somebody gives you a gift, right? It's ugly. <laughs> you don't really like it. <laughs> you don't want to be mean, so you take it, right? Get in your head, you're like, I'm going to give this to somebody. I don't really want this. Right? Think about the game, the game, Yankee Swap, right? Yankee swap, Yankee swap is usually played around Christmas time, right? Everybody buys a gift, puts the gift into, you know, on the table. Everybody get a number. Number's called, you go up. Your number's called, you go up, get your gift. Next person's number's called, they go up and get a gift. They open it. Now, you open these gifts, right? Because everybody wants to see what the gift is. So when your number's called, if you go up and you open a gift and you don't like it, you take the other person's gift like their gift better, you take that person's gift and give them the gift you don't like, okay? 
So usually regifting has a bad connotation, but not today. Not today. We're gonna change the mindset when it comes to regifting. Today we're gonna talk about regifting the gift of Christ. Amen. Amen. So in this particular scripture, where um, John and, and Peter, they're going up to the temple. They see this man, he's begging. Usually, I mean, every day, he's, hey, can I have, can I have some money? Can I have some money? Can I have some money? John and Peter looked at each other and like, hey, we ain't got no money, but we got something back. We're going to re get the gift of Jesus. He looks at him and say, look, I don't have any silver and gold. But what I have, I'm going to give to you. And what did he give? He said, I'm going to give you Jesus. Rise up. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Give him something better. I think we talked about it at, at court the other night uh, when we were talking about blind Bartimaeus. He asked for his sight. Now, he was a beggar as well, right? Both of these are beggars. But because they can walk, because they can see, now they can go out and make their own money. That get that money that people are going to give him, just begging, that's going to go away, right? Then he got to beg somebody else. Then he got to beg somebody else. They may only give him a penny. They may only get whatever. But the gift of Jesus Christ, he can get up himself and keep giving. It keeps on giving. The gift of Jesus Christ keeps on giving. So that's why we're dealing with regifting today. Okay? So, I'm not going to be before you long. Like I said, if anybody wants to say anything, all you got to do is raise your hand. If you want to expound, whatever you want to do. If you don't, we'll go through this and we'll go on home and we'll keep rapping. Those of y'all that rap because I don't rap, I, I think it's a waste of time. But you know, that's just me. So we're going to go through this, and then God is going to do what he wants to do. I just really want to leave you today with more of a reflection versus a hoop and holler. That's all it is. Ain't nothing wrong with it. God knows ain't nothing wrong with it. But I just want you guys to reflect today. Okay? So, as we were talking about in the, in the, um, in the Bible passage, Peter and John, they gave him the gift of Jesus, okay? So, the gift of Christ is meant to be regifted. A lot of times we get saved and I don't know if it's a selfish thing sometimes or if it's just a well, I got it. I, got, I ain't worried. I, look, I got it. I ain't worried about whether you get it or not, I, but I got it. And we tend to hold it to ourselves. And the gift of Christ is not meant to be held to ourselves. It is not meant to be held to ourselves. It's supposed to be given, given away, okay? Matthew 10 and 8 um, speaks of when Jesus told his, his disciples to pre preach, heal, raise the dead, cast out demons. He said, freely you receive. Don't just hold me. Don't just hold what I gave to you guys. Give it away. Give it away. The, the, the love that Jesus gives us, the, the hope that he gives us, why are we holding it to ourselves? Why don't we want to tell people about it? Give it away. Aren't we supposed to be expanding the kingdom? Anybody want to say anything? They're not the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of Jesus. That's not just for you. What God blesses you with, he expects you to use those to add to his kingdom. What, thing, what happens when things are not being used? Anybody? Speak, speak please? Uh-huh. Anybody else? What happens when you have a gift, when somebody gave you something, and you don't use it? What happens to it? Uh-huh. Away. Forget you had it. Uh huh. Uh huh. You forget.
that you even have it. Giving away, you know, it should be given to somebody else. Those are very good answers. Same thing happens with the gift of the Spirit. You got to give <laughs> if you can share the gift. Or you should proudly give it. Because yours don't look like this. And then what we do, we get mad. Well, I can do that too. Well, when I gave you space to use it, you didn't want to. Let's use our gifts. You forget you have these gifts. Because you're not because we're not giving them away. We're holding them to ourselves. Oh, I can just do that stuff. So I can prophesy. Oh, I can do that. Da, da, da. But I'm scared. I'm scared to say I said have the gift of dreams, but I'm scared, but I won't write them down, and dreams might go away, I'm telling y'all something now, y'all you know I'm transparent, y'all know I'm very transparent, and because when we're disobedient, and we don't get to do what we're supposed to with those gifts, God will, He will still be pleased with us, okay? We take these gifts for granted. Why? Why would we want to hold our gifts to ourselves anyway? We should be excited about Christ, what Christ has done in our lives. We should be like, golly, you know, God, man, I went through such and such and such, and if it weren't for Jesus, man, if it weren't for God, I'd have been locked up somewhere crazy and, and chased up. He don't, he don't, he don't shoot the dope with me, <laughs> which I'm glad he doesn't. Are we ashamed? Jesus. Are we ashamed? Are we, are we like embarrassed when somebody, you know, thinks we were saved or if we talk about Jesus a little bit or whatever and, and, and somebody says, well, I, I did, what did what you say? Nice. The other night, there go that girl, she talk about Jesus all the time, you know, da, 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 da. Are we ashamed? Are we embarrassed by him? That wouldn't be good either. Let me tell you why. Because Jesus said that whosoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the son of man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. So if you are ashamed and embarrassed of Christ, He's going to be embarrassed of you. Think about how terrible that'll be when he comes. And you're like, you knew you believed in him, right? You knew you believed in him. You said he was Christ, uh, he was God's son, and he died and rose again on the third day. And with all power, but you were ashamed to say anything to anybody about him. And then you, you know, he come and you like, <laughs> and he like, Father, I, I, oh God, I'm ashamed to even say she believes in me. What? How, how terrible would that be? And then we think, you know, he's a bad guy. Because <laughs> you know? we always like to put it on him. We always like to, you know, when, you know, um, I hear people say all the time, you know, uh, uh, a loving God wouldn't send you to hell. He's not sending anybody to hell. He gives you a choice, and you decide whether or not you want it. You sent yourself to hell if you go to hell. He said, you know, people, we, we so quick to put it on God because 
oh God, he would never, he would never. What we have no clue what he would never do. doesn't necessarily mean that you have to bring up you saved in every conversation. Every time somebody, you in Walmart, somebody walk up, I'm saved. I'm, Je- I'm for Jesus. I'm for Jesus. And you in, you know, you at work, and I'm for Jesus. I'm for Jesus. I'm for Jesus. That's not necessarily what that means. But there should be a difference between you and everybody else. Your gift <laughs> should be noticed your light should be shining if you are saved you're going to bear good fruit like it's just inevitable um it's a chain reaction what, what's the what, what is it in physics for every action there is a reaction that kind of thing if you are sa- if you truly have christ if that gift is working in you it is going to radiate you don't have to tell everybody I mean, yes, if they ask you, yes, yes, boldly, I am for Christ, for him I live, and for him I die. You know, yes, do that. But you do not have to broadcast it everywhere because it's going to be known. They're going to say, man, there's something different about Alana. I I, I can't put my finger on it, but there's something different about her. There's something different. And then they're going to ask the question. Why? Why? Good. Why is it when everything is going bad, when it seems like um, you should be losing your mind, you're, good morning, hello, how are you? People are getting laid off. Hey, how you doing? Well, just like I got this job, I get it. Just like God gave me this job, I get another one. How? How? How is it? Because of the gift of Christ that is in you. If you're constantly engaging in gossip, foul language, I mean, you know, everybody, you know what I'm saying, that you ain't no different from, no, from the next person. I can't tell a difference between you and the next person. That's when you're holding your gift to yourself. And then it qu- begs the question, do you truly have the gift? constantly doing constant something you're constantly dealing in I, 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 don't, I don't know do you really have to give because it doesn't we're all you know we all make mistakes I know there's certain things you know I, I constantly Lord forgive me for that thought I had I need you to purge my heart I need you to uh, I'm be like David God renew the right spirit in me God you know I, you know so we're always dying daily but if you are not even trying, if you are constantly in this stuff, then I choose, then I, I, I wonder about your gift. And other, other people will too. Because y'all know, sinners are the first ones I thought she would say. She claims she got Jesus, but every time I turn around, she cuts some folk out. She got a nasty attitude. Where's your gift? Amen? Anybody got anything to say? Please do. What I love about the redemption of Jesus Christ is that he used Peter to speak life into this man to get up and heal him. Mm-hmm. Because it was the same Peter who cut off ears. Come on. It was the same Peter that denied Come Christ. Come on. When Come Christ on. was right there with Come him. Come on. And so I know for a lot, for the last couple of weeks, right, we've really been talking about suffering and processing and being released in our due time. Yeah. Peter three years before would have done that, he would have got beat up like the sons of Jesus. Because <laughs> he didn't have the supernatural Come faith on. and trust in God that God that Jesus could look at him and say, Upon you I build my church. Yes. You are the rock. Yes. So I hear I hear this message and I'm also processing for myself, hey, don't move too quick, Peter. Don't start do- oh. <laughs> sorry. 
Don't start, don't start going out and, and trying to heal the sick and the lame. And you haven't gone through processing with me yet. Because what will then happen as believers, we'll begin to go out and give the gift. And then when people are not responding to the gift the way that we responded, we'll start, and that's where Satan will come in and start messing in our mind and say, is Jesus really powerful? And what we'll begin to question is either A, question his power, or does God really want to use his power in me? So I just love that as we are on Christmas and we're talking about the birth of Jesus and what his purpose was on the earth, that he allowed Peter, broke down, no faith, walking on water, drowning then Peter, cutting off ears, denying Christ Peter, that went through and endured the suffering and endured the processing with Christ so that then he could be the hands and feet and power of Christ. That's awesome. That is awesome. Anybody else? Anybody else? You sure? I feel like you want to say something, Jay. <laughs> no, I'm not going to pressure you. I'm not going to pressure you. You really want to? Huh? Okay. Please do. Yeah. Even in the event that that was stated, um, I remember, you know, how you had just said that, and I was thinking, I was like, Okay, that that resonated with me, mm -hmm. just because there'll be many times where we go out, and wow. there'll be many times where we go out, but our assignment is not yet called yet. Like our assignment is not yet bringing right. So then when we go out and then we we have the expectation of something, and it doesn't fit, that's when we start to question God. Is this really what we want to do, right? Because I remember I went to do I went to because in Mark sixteen fifteen it says go out and preach the gospel, and that's mm -hmm. what you had said, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I I was doing that. And Miss, I actually came across Miss Watts at Walmart. That's crazy. She was shopping too, right? And she was like, is this what the Holy Spirit told you to do? And I, had to, I even had to think to myself, is it just a zeal or is this actually what Christ wanted me to do? You know what I'm saying? So it was all about was it the right timing to do this thing? Was it, you know, it's all in God's timing as well. Exactly right. Because if you think about it, when you give your child a gift, uh, a lot of times – it's a some assembly required, right? You got to put the stuff together. You got to make sure this piece is in with this piece. And you got to make sure that piece is with that piece. And da 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 And then you put it together. And you think you're all ready to go. <laughs> and you ain't put something quite right together. You know what I'm saying? So like you said, it's that process. It's, it, the gifting is a process as well. You know what I'm saying? And then there's some toys that you can't, the gift can't move until you have batteries boom you won't move until you have the batteries so you may have that gift you may have that gift but if you ain't got the power source because what what does the bible say gifts come without repentance so that that's just like you know with the psychics and stuff they think they telling you da 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 but it's coming from the wrong source they don't they got triple a better is what it should be d it ain't right it ain't right <laughs> you know what i'm saying so praise god for that thank you so much for that both of you sister watson and caleb i knew you had something you wanted to say i know you did amen amen um so now you know we're just gonna go on a little bit um when you get good good gifts at christmas what do you do you can't wait to tell i'm talking more to the children right now you can't wait to tell somebody what you got man i got them jays boy i got the ones i got this you know i got the airpods i got the new apple i got the new apple phone i got you know what i'm saying i got the I, I, you know iphone 15 no don't don't think you gonna get that not this christmas but you can't wait you can't wait to tell people what you got for christmas you, you tell them how fun it is, how great it works, how you didn't even know how you lived without it. We do, so, we do such a good job explaining how it works and how great it is that others want to know where we got that gift and how much it costs. So, you can tell God about, I mean, you can tell people about the gift of God the same way, the gift of Christ the same way. You can tell them how you just don't know how 
you got along without him before he before he was given to you. You can tell him about how you don't go things go through things alone anymore. Even when you don't feel like he's listening to you, I promise you he's there. My God. You can tell them about how the relationship you you have with Jesus, how he cares about even the little things. All the things that concern you, he cares about even the little things. And it's so crazy because yesterday I was talking to my sister on the phone, and we were both saying, you know, we hadn't. uh, She's not biological sister, but I've known her since fourth grade, so we even look alike. It's crazy. (laughs) People think we are really, truly sisters. And we were just thinking like, ah, you know, we, you know, we're both working very busy or whatever, and we haven't seen each other in a while. And I'm, she's like, God, I just, I just gotta put my eyes on you. You know, Lord, I just gotta put my eyes on my sister. And I'm like, yes, I just gotta put my eyes on my sister. And as we're typing this, <laughs> Naya says, mommy, I just saw Aunt Fallon. <laughs> we were in Walmart, she's like, I just saw Aunt Fallon. And I just, I like literally was almost in tears. They're like, oh my God, he thought that, that, that little I just want to lay my eyes on my sister, and there she was. You know what I'm saying? The little things. Even what you want for dinner, I have literally said, oh, I really want some Nick Rose of cabbage for dinner, God. And doggone, if my husband ain't making, because can't nobody make it like he can. <laughs> you know, so I, it's just the little things. So you can tell God about that, even the little things. You can tell them about the joy you have, even when things are going crazy we talked about. You can tell them about the forgiveness that he gives. You can tell, also tell about him being, um, you can get him anywhere. You don't necessarily have to be in the church house to get him. You can be in your kitchen. You can be in your backyard. You can be in your car. You can be at work. Because you being the gift, you can bring somebody to Christ right at where you or school. You know that, right? Because you've got the gift. So you can give them to them right where, wherever you at. You can give them the gift. Amen? Amen. And uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Come on. Come on. I'm getting there. Yes. Yes. That was the next thing. That was the next thing. The best thing about it is it's free. He's free. It's just like a rich person going into Walmart and buying everything up. Tell Walmart, he says, look, tell the manager, tell the store owner, I'm going to buy everything in this store. And whoever wants to, they can come in and get it. All they got to do is voice that they want it, and they can have it. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine somebody going to Walmart and buying up everything and then just saying, all right, if you want it, it's in there. All you got to do is tell them that you want it. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. It's free. That's how the gift of Christ is. It's free. He paid for it all. That's that's, that's a song I want. That's y'all homework. (laughs) Wes Morgan, he paid it all. If that don't take you in. He paid it all on Calvary. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Even for the ones that don't want him. Even for the ones that deny him. They still pay for it. Just in case they just say, I need you now. Could you have done that? Could you have died? For people, for folks that say you ain't real. You're just a figment of people's imagination. You are just the white man's religion. You are just, could you have died for folks that don't even want you? But just on the chance that they may change their mind, I'm going to die for you too. That is the greatest gift. So, in closing, because that's all I got, (laughs) let's be re-gifters.
even though what we have is amazing and wonderful and we want to keep it for ourselves. And that's the great thing too. We can keep it for ourselves and still regift it. <laughs> so we can have our cake and eat it too, which I just found out was not really the saying. It's, it's, he wants his cake and eat it too, not cake and eat it too. Okay, but anyway, tangent, tangent. But we can have our cake and eat it too. We can. Just be regifters, okay? So that's all I ask. Just think about that. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Okay, um, that was a good message, you all. I hope everyone received that and got good clarity and use it. But right now, we will have offering. All right, and we can give, you can give in person or you can give online at www.hcmgoldsboro.org. Or you can give on Cash App, dollar sign HCM Goldsboro. Forgive me, you all. Um, if there is anyone that wants to be saved on today, come on up and get the gift. Forgive me, y'all. Forgive me. Because that's important. <laughs> all right. If we were all by our heads, Lord, we thank you for those that gave and those that had the heart to give but couldn't give, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that you will multiply this offering, Lord Jesus, for more than enough for everything that we stand in need of for it to be used for, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, we also have our winter blanket drive collecting now through January the 31st. Items accepted includes blankets, socks, gloves, and hats, new or gently used. No monthly huddle this week. Next meeting will be the vision meeting, which will, which will be in January. Um, that would be at 10 a.m. All HCM operators, please be in attendance for the vision um, meeting on Saturday. Uh, we also have our 2024 Women's Unity Conference, January the 20th at 9 a.m. Um, Miss Nona Best will be the host. Hope I'm not missing up a name. Uh, we also have the food pantry, um, which we have our food boxes are also available after service. If you are in need, please grab a box. Please subscribe to us on YouTube at Higher Calling Ministries of Goldsboro. Um, also follow us on Instagram at Higher Calling Ministry. Oh, I'm sorry, at HCM Goldsboro. And if we had any birthdays here in December, we would like to say happy birthday to you all. Y'all want to sing them happy birthday? Let's go. Okay, well, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Right. <laughs> uh, um, 
if we um get myself together, please fill out the connect cards. Um, and if we have any guests, if we have any guests, please fill out the connect card, which will be right here in the back. Fill it out so we can stay in con in connection with you. All right. Um, and if you're in need of any prayer, please submit your prayer request in the prayer box, which is up front, and we will be in prayer for you all. And if you're looking for a seat, come on in. We got room for you. I guess I will uh, pray us out. All right, dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the word that you have given us on today, God. Lord, we thank you for even being able to lay eyes on one another once again on today, God. Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord Jesus, as we leave this place, God. Be with us, Lord Jesus, wherever that we may be going on today, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for you being God in our lives. Continue to protect us. Continue to have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.